Okay, welcome Physics 20 students to our first lesson in the course in Unit A in Kinematics. We're going to start by looking at distance and displacement. This is our first example of vectors and scalars, which we'll begin with talking about. This is two categories of terms that we'll commonly reference throughout physics. And Vector made pretty popular by the Despicable Me villain who is named Vector. And in the video, he actually accurately describes a vector as... It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh yeah! But what does a vector really mean? What's a scalar and why is it important to know the difference between the two? Let's take a closer look while we explore distance versus displacement. Okay, so we'll start with our definitions, really similar to the video. A vector is described as both direction and magnitude. Magnitude uh, probably sounds more complicated than it actually is. It just means the amount, the number where a scalar is just focused on that part, just the number, not direction. So maybe if you drove your car 15 kilometers, that would be like a scalar value. But if we said 15 kilometers with the direction northwest, that's sounding more like a vector. When are we interested in direction and when are we not interested in direction? Let's look at an example where maybe someone was going for a run and someone was driving their car. If someone goes for a run, they say, I ran one kilometer, two kilometer, five kilometer, that's the most important part of information about that run. We don't really care about the direction. You could have done laps on a track or run straight forwards and run backwards. As long as we're talking about a certain distance, that's what determines how difficult the run was gonna be, not necessarily the direction. So that'd be a scalar quantity. If we're driving our car and you're saying, oh, I'm gonna meet you at this restaurant, it's 5.2 kilometers away. We need to know how far but we also really need to know the direction. You can't just drive some distance, any direction, and expect to get there. So a scalar, where we're not really worried about the direction, and vector, where the direction is going to be important. Let's take a look at some other examples where there might not even be a direction that could be assigned. For example, temperature. Temperature is a scalar quantity because there is no direction. You can't have 20 degrees north or 20 degrees down or to the left. It's just a value. Mass is the same thing, doesn't have direction. And our example for today is distance. The total route that you traveled, we're not interested in the direction, just the total length of wherever you went, similar to the running example. Some vectors, we'll look more at these later on in the course, but acceleration, you might be familiar with the acceleration of gravity. It's 9.81 meters per second squared down. It'd be very different if it was upwards, it'd be a very different world. So the direction for acceleration, important. Force as well, kind of like force of gravity, similar example. And the one we're focusing on here, displacement for today. So we're going to compare that displacement and distance as our examples of vectors and scalars in today's lesson. Okay, so let's look at this diagram with distance and displacement. I think it shows the difference pretty well. So let's say this person is going for a run and this is on a map and it shows the entire route that they were able to run. It doesn't really matter that it's all curved. How far they ran is their distance. If I straightened it out in a straight line or curved it even more, they're running that length of distance. And we're gonna represent that with a D, just really simple represents the distance. What we're gonna use as our vector quantity though is displacement, which is a line from where we start to where we end. Okay, so now looking at where we changed our position, we started here, and after all this movement, our overall direction was down and to the right here. Maybe on a map, it would be a little bit south and east. So that's our displacement from where we start to where we end. We're taking into account all the direction that we ended up compared to where we started. Now, because it starts with a D, we would like to just put D as well, but we're gonna add a couple things on here to make it look different than distance. So we have this triangle, which looks kind of intimidating, but it just means change. That's gonna be change, and then this D, as much as we think change in distance, it's actually gonna represent the term position, change in position. I wish that would just be a P, it'd be easier, uh, but change in position is what this represents, okay? And the arrow on top, that actually just tells us that it is a vector. So change in position, that's a vector, 
that is displacement. Okay, let's look at some examples where maybe you'd have to calculate distance and displacement. And we'll start with one dimension, and this is where the car is going to go up in the vertical dimension, turn around and come back down in the vertical direction. So nothing side to side here. What's the distance? Well, they went 10 and then they went 6. You just add those together to get the distance. The car went 16 kilometers. Not too bad. The displacement, we're going to go from where we started to where we ended up. We ended up up the page. Well, what are we going to determine that? Well, let's call it up positive 10 kilometers. And then we went down 6 kilometers. So if I take plus 10 and minus 6, our overall displacement, a positive 4 kilometers. That's our displacement for this example. Not too bad. Maybe we didn't have plus and minus, but we had north and south. 10 kilometers north, 6 kilometers south. So we just say went 4 kilometers north as our overall displacement. So not too bad in one dimension. Where it's going to get a little bit trickier is we look at two dimensions. So this means we're going to go up in the vertical axes, and then we're going to go sideways now. That's 6 kilometers doesn't change distance very much. Our distance is still 16. We went 10 and then 6. The route traveled was 16. Displacement's going to get a bit tricky here, though. So we started here, ended up here. Let's draw a line from my start to the end. That's the value we're looking for for displacement. Okay. I consider that we went north and then they went east, but i got to find the length of this line. But hopefully you can see this makes a right-angled triangle. A right angle would be right here. We went north and then east. We're looking for the hypotenuse. We can use Pythagorean theorem of a squared plus b squared is c squared. So put in my 10 squared, 6 squared, square root that, and I get 11.66. So my displacement of round to 12 kilometers. From where I started to where I end is a total of 12 kilometers. Okay, so a little bit harder, but still not too bad. But unfortunately, we're not quite done yet because we said 12 kilometers, but remember we have to put the direction. We could describe it maybe as northeast, but in physics 20, we want to be a little bit more particular than just north and east. So we're actually going to calculate this angle. You're always going to start with where we began, where the person began, and we're going to calculate that angle right there. So here the opposite to that is 6. The adjacent is 10, so we're going to use 10 opposite over adjacent, up to 10 minus 1 to get the angle here, 6 over 10, and we get an angle of 30.96, and that would round to 31 degrees. So another step to make it a little bit trickier, but we have to describe the angle as well. As much as I wish we were done there, we do have another step, because 31 degrees, what? We have to describe exactly where that is. So it's a bit of a new way to describe angles here. We're going to reference north, east, south, and west. Okay, so in this angle, when I've shaded this one here, you're always going to have the one going up at an angle, and then one of the lines is going to be directly north, east, south, or west. This one is directly north. I've highlighted it in green. So imagine instead of going directly up north, we have gone this direction from north, so we have gone to the east of north. So we're going to describe that 31 degrees as east of north. It takes a little bit of time to get used to that description, but that's how we'd write that one. It is possible to describe it a bit different and still be correct, though. Maybe you got 31 degrees north of east, but you check for the answers on a test that's not there. They could describe it the other way. Let me show you what I mean. So if I put on a plane here, this is north, pointing up that way. This is east. They might describe it based off of east. So if this was 31, they might describe this angle. Okay, so looking at that angle there, kind of shown twice, I can just take 90, this 90 degrees, from my east to my north, minus the 30.96, and get a value of 59 degrees. So I can describe this angle here as 59 degrees, referencing east, so I'm starting with east, I didn't go that way, I went north of east. 59 degrees north of east gets me to this blue arrow, and 31 degrees, or 30.96, east of north gets me that arrow as well. So both are completely fine answers. You could put 59 degrees north of east as well. Okay, I know that's a bit tricky, so let's do a couple more examples just with describing those angles. So let's say uh, a car or a person goes to the west, and then goes south, 
and their displacement is shown from where they started to the way where they end like this. Similar to the last one with the same mathematical uh, calculations, you find 65 degrees. So you use the opposite and the adjacent, whatever they had, and you got 65 degrees. How would we describe that? Well, looking at this as our reference, because we see this angle has an angled vector, and we have a line going straight to the left or west in this case. So you're going to be something of west, because we're not going directly west. Are we north or south? We are south of west. There's a bigger arrow showing it. So 65 degrees south of west is how we would describe that angle. But there's always two options. We could also describe it instead of referencing west, we could reference south as well, referencing that angle. So how far of are we away from south? We'll just have to take 90 degrees minus the 65 and get 25 degrees here. Okay, so we could also describe it as 25 degrees, not south, but we're going west of south. So 25 degrees west of south would also be correct. Both those ways of describing it based off of northeast, south, and west is the navigation method. I need to make it a bit more complicated, but there's one more thing you could see. I'd say maybe one of every five. It doesn't use either of those, but it just references directly to the right. It doesn't even say east. It just is directly to the right, kind of like a Cartesian plane, which is what you would graph on. So this is like quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four, like on a graph. So everything on a graph starts here. So we're going to measure how far it is from this line directly right. Okay, so let's draw that arc. It would look like this. From directly right goes 90, 180, and then 65 more. So how we could describe this big arc would be 245. 180 plus the 65, this angle would be 245. It doesn't come up as commonly, but these are three ways, one, two, three ways they could describe that angle or ask you to describe this angle. Okay, so I know that's a lot for describing angles. Let's try one more just to make sure we're understanding it. This one we go south and then we go east and the displacement from where we started to where we ended is this line here. And we calculate the angle and we get 30 degrees. 30 degrees what of what? Well, looking here first, I'm gonna reference directly south and I am east from south. So that'd be 30 degrees east of south. If that's not showing up on the test, there's other options describing um, south of east. We're going to put in the other side here showing this is east. And we'll look at the angle going the other direction. How far south of east are we? Well, we'll go 90 minus 30 is 60 degrees south of east. Could be another option to describe it. Last one that doesn't pop up as often, the Cartesian method from directly right. Let's put the graph on here. So from this place, we're going to go almost all the way around. We're going to go 90, 180, 270, 30 more would be 300 degrees based off the Cartesian method. And that's it for our first video. I hope that helped you to understand a bit of the difference between vectors and scalars. We'll keep expanding on those throughout the whole course, distance and displacement, and how to describe angles. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.